Hello everybody, my name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP and I want to welcome you for joining us on Digital Adoption Talks. Today there are over 300,000 business professionals with digital adoption in their job titles on LinkedIn. So this show with my co-host Joachim Schirmacher, CEO of ClickLearn, we talk to some of the leading digital adoption experts in the Microsoft Dynamics ecosystem. And today we're thrilled to have Jeff Nye, the president of Microsoft partner, New Dynamic. Jeff, introduce yourself and tell the Thank people. Thank you, Rick. Happy you to spend some time with you and Joachim today. I'm Jeff Nye, president of New Dynamic. We are a Microsoft partner solely focused on the Dynamics 365 customer engagement platform. Based in Kansas City, we serve clients across North America. Our services include engagements that range from very strategic in nature, such as envisioning workshops and CRM road mapping exercises, to implementations, customization work, integration, training, and support, all related to the Dynamics 365 CE platform. And you have a football team in Kansas City, too. We do. We do. Uh, okay. Pulling pulling for them okay. very strong right now. Uh, all right. Great. So let's get right into this, uh, Jeff, because I was looking on your website, and you've got a big statement out there, and it says, avoid failure. Don't ignore user adoption. Then it reads, low adoption occurs when your D365 user activity our users actively resist utilizing the components of the system. Amazingly, multiple industry studies claim failure rates between 47% and 63% for new CRM software implementations. Jeff, what is this all about? Well, Rick, if you think about it, success in the CRM world, more so than any other type of business application, is defined by user adoption. Business executives, business owners, they set off on CRM initiatives to achieve certain outcomes. These may be higher sales team productivity, better visibility in the sales process or the pipeline, better communications between marketing, sales, and customer service, or a more streamlined quoting process. In all of these cases, the objective has little chance of becoming a reality without high user adoption. Okay, Yoko, would you like to add anything about uh, what it says on the new dynamic No, I think website? that it's just wonderful that a partner actually puts it on the front page of their website because this is what we've been preaching. And obviously with Jeff, we're preaching to the choir, but I think that, that part of this is uh, it's, it's, it's really great. And I think that you're absolutely right when you say that more, than, more so than any other application area, I think that the customer engagement side is particularly necessary because we've had salespeople that we put, you know, through devastating tasks of, uh, you know, get more information from the market and put it into our, you know, Siebel system, if you remember that uh, platform, right, which was horrible, horrible processes to put on top of someone that actually wants to close deals. And I think there's a certain resistance in the sales uh, force out there. Whenever someone says CRM, uh, everyone looks a little scared, right? It's, it's not necessarily a positive thing for them. Uh, so I think that the idea of bringing the right user adoption is really the, the difference between being successful in a customer engagement process and not being successful. So I, I applaud that. So, you know, I've done a few CRM projects, probably over 200. So failure is a big word. And when I see failure, um, I think we have to be clear that because we're in the cloud now, we don't have the technical failure we used to have, like synchronization problems, mobility problems. I think we've got that piece sorted out. But it's amazing that, you know, you know, we're like 26 years into the CRM journey from when, you know, we're talking about Siebel. The first time I saw them in New York at a trade show that said, we're a CRM company. And we were all Salesforce automation companies. And we all looked at each other, what the heck's a CRM company? We soon found out, but we're 25 years later and we're still talking about, you know, sales digital adoption uh, being a problem. So I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the design of the system, not made for, you know, not made for the salespeople, but I think they don't engage the salespeople enough when they're building the system and then you know there's no digital adoption program put in place at the end to make sure that they're kind of coached through the process i agree on that and i think that the idea around utilization 
I mean, imagine that this was a server. It's, I mean, that didn't run, right? Our system is down. Uh, we, I don't, I don't think that any project would last more than six seconds without having that server kicked off again, right? And ready to function. But for some reason, when we're talking utilization from a Salesforce on on our CRM, ah, doesn't really matter. Right? It's exactly the same thing. It's just the people side of it. And and we've we've actually and it's it's taken us this long to get to the point where we. Uh, value the the uh, uh, the actual adoption of the users as high as we do uh, on the server. And you know, when it comes to sales, not having that data, which really is the point here, right? Because if we have a low user adoption, the data is in a spreadsheet. This I guarantee. Like when we're doing, you know, a study on sales productivity for a company, and I'm looking at the CRM, I don't see the data there. I just turn around and say, okay, show me your spreadsheet. <laughs> and you'll see some of the most, the best spreadsheet applications yeah. you've ever seen in your life that these salespeople have built right. for themselves. Or in some cases, the manager built it and his whole team or her team's using this spreadsheet. And, you know, well, yeah, yeah, we use CRM. You'll see the phone yeah. numbers are in there. So, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about what's the ripple effect of low digital adoption well, in CRM. Think about all the different kinds of business processes companies have the ability to manage now and enhance through the use of a CRM solution. But no matter how automated we become, most of these key business processes will always, they're going to continue to require some element of active human participation, right? Well, low user adoption can lead to incomplete or inaccurate data, just like you mentioned, Rick, bad reporting, and ultimately a loss of faith in the CRM system. You, you wind up in scenarios like you just mentioned with spreadsheets off to the side. Um, and unfortunately, this lack of adoption can continue to spiral, down, spiral downward. And uh, you know, think about it as, as new users are introduced to the system, they can receive poor training and an overall lack of direction when it comes to the benefits of the CR, that the CRM system can offer. I think that's where a, a tool like ClickLearn can come into play and, uh, and uh, be a great benefit to an organization, especially when you're introducing new users to a system. Yoko, yeah, like no, I think that's uh, pretty much why people are at, at least uh, investing with us uh, and, and we are investing with our clients. Uh, that That is obviously on the onboarding journey and, and the idea of getting everyone on board in a safe way. And that I can tell you that first impressions do last in the sense that if you get off to the right start, there's a very, very uh, high likelihood that you will succeed on your implementation and have a high user adoption. So getting that right the first time is really important, not the second or the third time around, but the first time. And then the second thing is the performance support issues, right? That when you, when, even though you go through all this training and, and you, you spend a massive amount of resources on training people, there's still the, those, you know, infrequently performed tasks that you'll just never learn, right? Uh, doing your time expenses, uh, stuff like that, where you need a different methodology than traditional uh, training because we just can't train it for you because you're going to forget it because it's going to take a month before you actually get into the experiment around that uh, process. And that uh, there's there's the room for for actually driving some sort of a digital adoption uh, solution inside your space with virtual assistants that guide the user through those types of processes. So I think that you know it's 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 really on the spot that that serving them inside the application, making sure that they get the best possible onboarding uh, experience, and after that, making sure that you're actually continuing. Uh, the training um, with with an, uh, a positive uh, digital adoption uh, solution. And, you know, when we start talking about the ripple effect, I, I was thinking probably, I'm going to say at least 10 years ago, I, I did a lot of work for Microsoft Canada. I'm in Toronto. And I, you know, was working with uh, the CRM lead for Canada, and we put a workshop together um, that talked about what's the ROI for CRM. So I built all these calculators right from what's the value of a lead, what's the value of a lead conversion, what's the value of the of the of an opportunity, the opportunity conversion. And I spent weeks and I had all these calculators. And then it just dawned on me after I, I built the course and facilitated it was, it's just, what's the value yeah. of the data, right? What's the, all these, what is the value of data? And you can turn it and twist it any way you want. But if the users aren't putting the data in the system, or it's taking too much time, or it's a problem, 
that's I think that becomes the ripple effect from the ROI perspective. From the users, they're not happy and they may leave you, right? But uh, from a business, that data to most companies is worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And when we start talking that way to organizations about CRM, it changes. And I remember we were in one sales meeting and I brought this up and the CFO was sitting there and she's going, you're right. And guess who started showing up for every sales meeting every week? The CFO, right? Because she's sitting there going, put the data in the system type of thing, right? So I think it's the way companies look at it. How valuable is this and what can we we do to, to get it right? So Jeff, our next question, we're going to lead back to you being a Microsoft partner. What's the responsibility of a Microsoft partner to, uh, you know, really get digital adoption right for their customers? Rick, I think a, a good Microsoft partner will provide tailored guidance based on past experiences. I think an honest discussion about user the user adoption challenge up front and identifying the potential hurdles the client will face early in the journey is the best thing for both the client and the partner. Uh, I know New Dynamic makes a practice of this. And when it comes to ClickLearn in particular, we introduce the tool upfront and typically include the recommendation in our initial proposal. You know, so I think I think you're right. I think that a partner's got to go into a project, not only looking to, you know, I'm bidding the work to get it done. They have to sort of say, you know, I'm going to do the work for you, but I, you got to make sure you you know this works for them and, and becomes part of their business. Uh, you uh, I think that's anything. really the idea of bringing up the. I mean, it's about building trust with the client as well. If, if you're not bringing up the potential client uh, problems that the client does not see now, then you're not a very good partner. Even though it's it's it, it might not be the most positive news you can bring along, but we're not there to to uh, uh, bring positive news. We are there to make sure that we solve the pains that we're going to see ahead of us. And I think bringing up exactly the user adoption is, which is by far the, the biggest challenge in the, in, in the uh, CRM projects that you're going to see, right? We can create all the technology. It's fairly easy to uh, customize the processes. We have fantastic tooling around that, but driving the actual people to utilize this, making sure that they know what to do inside the solution, making sure that their every day is not changed. And if it's changed, that we actually have that information chain going, that we are changing this because we think we can do better. I think that's that's something that, that will bring up uh, a lot of trust from the client in, in a, a partner that brings that agenda up at the very forefront. So I think that we're seeing that more and more, that, that the issue is being brought up. And that, that's really positive. And, and I think it makes business sense for a partner because back in the, the good old days of CRM where we'd sell you a license yeah. for $2,500 uh, and we'd sell you your, your initial project for $300,000. Once you got that yeah. check from a customer, they're not right. going anywhere, right? We could take six yeah. months to implement this thing and yeah. have all kinds of problems. That customer's not going anywhere. Yeah. We're in cloud yeah. computing now, right? They turn on a you know, a $59, $69 license or a power platform license for $10. And they say, can you help me get started? So the partners that know how to, how to do this now really look at, say, okay, how do I onboard them, right? How do I get them up and happy? But this project will go on for three or four years now as it starts to expand out. And especially now when we're seeing in this Microsoft cloud environment where we're bringing in teams, we're bringing in now Viva, we're bringing in uh, marketing automation, those projects go on forever. So they're going to stick with with the partner that can really get this thing implemented right. And it just, I think, makes business business sense for a partner to have digital adoption professionals working for them. Okay, so... Um, I want to thank you both for joining me today because we could talk about digital adoption and salespeople for a long time. But, uh, but Jeff, do you have any uh, closing remarks for the I just uh, want to thank you for today? allowing me to join the conversation with you and, and Yoakum today. And Yoakum, I, I can't say enough good things about ClickLearn. Uh, I appreciate that. Thanks. You, you bet. Uh, you know, me and the team at New Dynamic, we love what you and, and your team are doing. And uh, I'll say if anyone would like to take a deeper dive into CRM user adoption, uh, you can check out a recent blog post of ours about addressing CRM user adoption issues before they occur. The whole concept of, like we just discussed, is knowing that they're going they're going to be there, they're going to happen, having that honest discussion up front and addressing them early. 
Yeah. Okay, so, thank you, Jeff. Joachim. It's Would been an like absolute pleasure having today. you, Jeff, and uh, congratulations on, on driving one of a very elite few uh, CRM businesses that actually take user adoption very, very seriously. Oh. Okay, gentlemen, thank, thank, you. thank you. Have a great day.